Hello, I'm Stephen Thomas. In this video, we're going to talk about BizTalk and Azure hybrid options. And this is part of my larger series on Azure integration services and hybrid options. Let's dive right in and talk about BizTalk Server and the state of integration today. BizTalk Server 2016 and earlier are completely out of mainstream support. When you think back at BizTalk Server 2013 R2, it has extended support that ends on July 11th, 2023. BizTalk 2016, regardless of your feature pack, has extended support through January 11th, 20, of 2027. And BizTalk 2020, which a lot of clients are using today, its mainstream support has been extended and ends April 11th, 2028, with extended support ending a couple years later. I, in my opinion, completely my opinion, I do not think we're going to see another edition of BizTalk Server. If we do, there'll be very little updates and enhancements. It'll be more just to, to extend the support dates and to give you the option to use newer uh, Visual Studio tools for that. So as of right now, I think BizTalk 2020 is going to be the last of our BizTalk servers. So where does that leave us with uh, our on-premise BizTalk servers? And now as we start to think about Azure integration services, what services are supported directly by our BizTalk server? So let's take a look. Uh, Logic Apps. So Logic Apps is the workflow in the cloud that has access to uh, hundreds and hundreds of connectors to interact with third parties. So BizTalk Server 2020 has direct uh, support for interacting with Logic Apps. There's also Service Bus. BizTalk Server can read and write messages to Service Bus queues in Azure. There's blob storage. So just like Service Bus, BizTalk can read and write to blob storage in the cloud. And also Event Hub. So BizTalk Server can receive events in from Event Hub and then write events from BizTalk Server into Event Hub, which is just native support built right into BizTalk Server. So why would we want to think about Azure Hybrid solutions? So it would allow you to reduce or remove a lot of your on-premise resources. So as you think about moving from your BizTalk environment to cloud-based solutions, things that tend to cause you problems on-premise, like text config files, FTP endpoints, file drops, having to set up that reverse proxy to have uh, communication back into your data center, and really just running BizTalk server itself can be challenging and always a point of issues in your environment. All those can be replaced with Azure features, some of those would be like Key Vault, which will allow you to store your passwords securely. Service bus queues allow you to have that in-order, dependable delivery of, of queuing messages. And then API management to kind of be your gatekeeper in. Definitely a lot more user-friendly than setting up a reverse proxy. So why is now the right time for you to start thinking about Azure integration services? Well, really, if you think about it, we will never have more BizTalk experience in the world today than we have right now. When you look at new developers that are coming into the workforce, I don't think there's a single one that's jumped up and said, hey, I'm going to jump in and do BizTalk server. That's just not where talent is going these days. And uh, with that said, more and more people with that BizTalk experience are moving on to other initiatives. Whether it's cloud initiatives, moving up into management, they're leaving their BizTalk skills behind. So never going to be more experienced with BizTalk right now if we want to look at moving those solutions away from BizTalk Server. Like most companies, clients are walking away with domain knowledge. The client will have a few developers and business analysts that are really good at understanding their BizTalk interfaces and what they do. But just like everything else, those people get promoted, they change jobs, they change departments. And clients are losing that domain knowledge for what their integration solutions were supposed to do and then have to reanalyze that, which is probably a good time if you're looking at moving integration anyways to kind of reevaluate the business needs. But it's definitely easier if you have the people that originally made those de decisions there. So continue on. What now rise the right time? Uh, it's a great time to just stop and say, what are my integration strategies going to be now and in the future? What are my needs going to be? Are we going to have cloud services we need to talk to? And really now is a great time to stop and think, what is our strategy going to be? 15, 20 years ago, the great strategy was, let's use BizTalk Server, be our strong on-premise solution for integration. That strategy isn't, isn't going to be very valid now as we're looking at more cloud-based integration points and clients even totally getting away from their on-premise data centers. So great time to reevaluate our strategy. 
Um, let's talk about some architectural scenarios uh, that are going to exist with our BizTalk server. It's still uh, an option with that. So what can we do with this BizTalk server? That's probably very mission critical if you still have BizTalk server running today. First, this was an architectural approach taken longer ago, I'd say more common five plus years ago. It's just a hardware lift and shift where you're going to take your on-premise BizTalk server and SQL move them to Azure in a virtual network and run them on Azure virtual machines. This is definitely a viable solution today. Doesn't solve your problem of running out of mainstream support a few years down the road. There are some benefits of this, no rework or development. You can scale up and down virtual machines that's needed in Azure, so you can reduce those resources in your on-premise data center. Take full advantage of all the Azure services, virtual networks, stuff like that. And, you know, as I said, reduce some of your on-premise resources. Uh, another architectural scenario is to do new development only in the cloud in your Azure components and slowly move your BizTalk solutions over as time sees fit. Eventually, though, you're going to run out of time with that BizTalk server five years or so from now. And it was going to result in the maintenance of two separate integration environments and kind of having to understand both. But it does give you a way to start moving into things slowly. So the benefits of this is generally it's the easiest to sell when I'm talking to a client and going through different options. This one seems to make the most sense. It gets developers up to speed at their own pace and then look at moving BizTalk uh, services over as, as it makes sense. Um, the third scenario is going to be time to upgrade BizTalk server, so let's go ahead and do a full rework and migration. I worked with a client that did just this. I think they were running BizTalk 2013 or 2016, I guess it was, and looking at moving to BizTalk 2020. Instead, they decided to make the move from BizTalk server to Azure integration services. And it, it worked really good for them. It was a long project, multiple years, because they had a lot of endpoints. But, you know, you would approach it as you would any other migration. You would work on your critical resources first, get them into the new environment, and then move over all your other supporting services as it uh, sees fit. The benefits of this is you get to leverage the full features of the Azure cloud. Most clients will actually see a cost reduction in the amount they pay for Azure integration services compared to BizTalk server licensing and running it in their own data center. So there could be some benefits there. Fully retire your on-premise assets. I think everyone's super excited when they can go in and shut down that BizTalk server for the last time. And plus, that means you never have to install BizTalk server again, which is definitely, I consider, a plus. It gives you the ability to fully grow into other Azure services as your needs, needs arise for those. And, you know, as I mentioned, you could have a cost savings uh, because a lot, of, a lot of clients do find that the Azure pay-per-use model is a cost savings there. So really what I like try to rephrase is as integration reimagined. So before we were focused on this box, this BizTalk server environment that we had to play with, and now we can be a lot more creative. We can do a lot more different things with our integration, and we have a lot more different services available to us, and we don't have to use them all. So I really like to think of it as you know, reimagining the way we do our integration. Um, you do have to make sure you find the right balance, though. The right solution is not going to be the same for everyone. But you want to make sure you always follow your corporate and government data requirements. Look at what Azure data centers you're using, where they're going to store their data, especially if you're outside of the U.S. There may be different government regulations around where that data physically resides. So you want to keep some of those things in mind when you build your solutions. But you really want to stop and look at what your integration is doing today and then just remodel that and think of how to map those existing components to Azure services. Like BizTalk orchestrations is going to generally map to logic apps, but it doesn't necessarily have to. You don't necessarily need a logic app if you had an orchestration doing that before. You might be able to solve that problem with API management and service bus queues, or if it's a lightweight solution functions even. So there may be different ways than a direct uh, migration from you know orchestrations to logic apps to solve your problem. Don't try to force a solution. I've worked with some clients that would say, oh, we have this talking to two different servers on premise. I can either send that data up to the service bus and run it through a logic app and send it back just so that all our integrations are in the cloud. Well, that might not always be the best solution. I would kind of consider that forcing a solution, you might want to look at you know, keeping some on-prem uh, services running if that's the kind of thing you're, you're looking at doing.
don't take on too much at once. So if you are going to do a full migration, you know, don't start with everything at once. Start and fast track one interface because you're going to learn a lot from that first migration. It is a lot of work uh, and it's a lot of learning. Uh, you get to learn new things in Azure, which a lot of people can get excited about. And if you're an existing BizTalk developer, everything's going to make sense. As you look at Logic Gaps and Service Bus, these are concepts that you work with every day working with BizTalk Server. So things are going to make, make sense for you in the cloud. Uh, if you want to learn more, this is uh, one video in a multi-video series. You can go to stephenwthomas.com slash learn to see a link to all the videos in this course. Uh, I also have some uh, content on Pluralsight, two courses on enterprise messaging and eventing and uh, enterprise logic apps. The getting started in fundamentals course, a little bit older, um, but still very relevant to learn some more core concepts around logic apps. And thank you.